and welcome to my ultra life. Today I'm in Hobart, Tasmania. Hobart is the capital of Tasmania. Tasmania is an island sitting south of Australia. And even though it's separated from Australia, it is actually one of the Australian states. Most people my age at least, when you think of Tasmania, they think of the cartoon character, the Tasmanian devil. Well, the Tasmanian devils are, are real creatures and we'll talk about them a little bit more uh, on the way. I've been here just a short time. Uh, but I find that these people are very independent, very environmentally friendly, and um, and the, the town is just an amazing, uh, beautiful, clean colonial uh, village. I think of it a little bit of you know Oregon with uh, a little bit of English Old Spice sprinkled on top. Um, so the town is about two miles north. So we better get running. Let's uh, go run through Hobart. The huge building behind me there, which is not really fitting to the landscape at all, and it's probably the tallest building in Hobart, is called the Rest Point. It is uh, the local casino, like Las Vegas gambling, is uh, legal in Australia. So each city has a big casino like that. Hobart uh, rests at the base of Mount Wellington, which is a 4,000 foot uh, mountain of dolerite rock. Uh, so it really uh, looks over the city. It's quite majestic. And the city is ringed with these foothills. You'll notice they've uh, taken the houses up the foothills about as far as they can. So everywhere around Hobart, uh, it's just ringed with these suburbs up into the hills. And uh, so they say that Everyone in Hobart has a view. We're still on the outskirts of town. This is, I started in a subdivision called Sandy Bay, which is a very nice enclave of uh, houses looking over the river. But soon we'll be in central Hobart. I'm now in an area called Battery Point, which is a small little village made up of uh, shops and restaurants. Nice little bakery here. Uh, and Battery Point was the village that's uh, up the hill from the wharfs where the uh, workers and the sailors would live. So there's lots of small little cottages and things along the way. Very interesting old buildings. And down a little street here, we find a place called Arthur's Circus. It's a little circular area with a small little park inside with uh, all the original old workers' houses around the little circle. So, Arthur's Circus. Some of these buildings even have the date. So uh, most of these were built in the mid 1800s. Hobart is uh, located on the Derwent River and it's actually the well, second deepest natural harbor uh, in the world. Interestingly, Tasmania wasn't always called that. Tasmania originally it was called Van Diemen's Land and uh, the British had already had settlements in uh, Australia like Sydney since around 1788 but the French were starting to make claims on Van Diemen's Land and the British wanted to have uh, wanted to fend them off and stake their own claims so they sent out expeditions and uh, there were actually two separate settlements. Uh, in, uh, one on Risdon Cove by John Bowen, he landed in September 1803. And uh, also Captain Collins. Collins' first location didn't work out. 
so he moved nearby uh, to Solomon's Cove, which is now the location where Hobart is located. Funny enough, both Bowen's and Collins' uh, settlements were named Hobart, but only one survived. So we come down the hill from Battery Point, and we reach an area called Salamanca. And uh, you see these buildings along the side here. These are all the old storage warehouses, which are now uh, trendy shops, restaurants, and pubs. And uh, every Saturday, they have the Salamanca Market. The Salamanca area with a vibrant Saturday market going on already at uh, 8 in the morning. So much like Sydney, uh, Hobart was uh, started as a convict settlement. Uh, so for example, when John Bowen first arrived, there were 49 men on the ship, uh, made up of convicts, settlers, and uh, military men. And convicts weren't always men, they were female convicts. And you could be uh, sentenced for uh, petty theft or assault in Great Britain and be sentenced to the distant shores across the sea and uh, find yourself in a settlement like Sydney or Hobart. Looks like many new settlements, Hobart had a little bit of a tough start. Uh, first location lacked fresh water and uh, soil to plant. But once I moved over here to Sullivan's Island, they had ample fresh water and uh, of course a lot of fresh timber and things. So uh, the other problem was that the convicts that were sent here were the repeat offenders from Sydney. So it was really started off with the worst of the worst and lack skilled labor. But over time, they developed a robust economy with whaling, timber, exporting wool, uh, all sorts of things, and uh, became a thriving economy. And finally, in 1850, Van Diemen's Land was renamed Tasmania. So I'm not sure if the uh, video picked it up or not, but this morning a big cruise ship arrived at dock. So all these people are getting off the cruise ship and heading to heading to Salamanca Market. We're on the we're on the big ship. <laughs> so here's the old cruise ship and the new on the Derwent River. This is a massive, huge, very wide river and very deep. And in front of us here is the central Hobart. Hobart has a very uh, rich connection with Antarctica. Uh, this Hobart has been kind of a launching point for uh, Antarctic exhibitions. And uh, this is a replica of uh, Mawson's hut. I don't believe he was the first uh, expedition to Antarctica. But this is a replica of the hut they built. Uh, it actually housed 18 men uh, in this hut. And it's still there, apparently filled full of ice. Um, but uh, it's about 3,000 kilometers or 1,800 and some miles from here to Antarctica. Sounds pretty far, but it's probably the closest place uh, from anywhere else. Uh, and they built this hut in Antarctica in around 1911. So, um, early, early days for the uh, Art Antarctic explorers. Pretty tight quarters for uh, 18 men, right? Throughout the city, uh, in commemoration of uh, the A Antarctic explorers, they have several bronze statues like these uh, huskies here. Uh, so just, just interspersed around town, you'll see these bronze statues uh, commemorating the explorers and efforts to uh, to learn more about Antarctica.
And across the street here is the uh, Tasmanian Museum where they actually have a, a display and uh, a lot of information about the Tasmanian Devil. So Tasmanian Devils are, are real, they're not really a cartoon uh, and, and look nothing like the cartoon that we grew up with. So uh, they are marsupials like kangaroos with pouches and they store fat in their tails. Uh, so if you see a more Tasmanian devil with a, a fat tail, you know he's a healthy one. Uh, but they do have very strong teeth. And uh, they are carnivores. They eat like chickens and, and uh, other kind of you know, mice and things like that. So the farmers didn't like them because they ate the chickens. Uh, but now the uh, Tasmanian people are very proud of their Tasmanian devils. Another native marsupial to uh, Tasmania was the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the thylacine. And uh, unfortunately, it went extinct. Uh, the last known Tasmanian tiger died in captivity in 1936. But uh, much like we search for Bigfoot, uh, the search for the thylacine continues. So anytime there is a uh, new kind of animal track spotted or uh, some sort of animal droppings that they don't recognize, they call out the experts and try to determine if it's from a thylacine Tasmanian tiger or not. Uh, but none have been found, so the search continues. In Sydney, you'll find a real mix of the old with the new, the old uh, sandstone buildings, very European uh, influence uh, next to an Art Deco building. This is uh, the old Mercury newspaper building. Uh, so it's really the old with the new, but with that uh, kind of colonial flair. And I find that, you know, the city is just very, very clean and well organized. This is the uh, Tasmania Parliament Building. And uh, I think you get a good example of uh, old mixed with new. The buildings back there, uh, this one's being torn down, but the buildings back there, uh, it's really modern government buildings in front of the original Parliament Building. So really a mix of the old and the new. So I'll wrap up our uh, run through Hobart here in Salamanca Market. You can see with cruise lines and uh, markets like Salamanca Market, uh, Hobart is really a thriving tourist destination. In fact, in 2013, Lonely Planet named Hobart one of the top 10 cities to visit in the world. So it really is a lovely city rich in history, culture. It's uh, become a very uh, foody place to visit. We've had some wonderful meals here. So uh, I'll wrap up, run through Hobart here. And uh, I've had ultra lifetime, and I hope you do too. Now all I have to do is run back home. <laughs>